Hey, all you cool cats. Ready for a little fun? Huh, that's what I thought. Pop talk. Scooby doo wah do wah Pop talk. The fun never stops, you know. Pop talk. If you're a nerd or a jock, run, don't just walk. You better do what you got. Pop talk. Now, it's time for Pop Talk. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to San Diego Comic-Con here in beautiful Funkoville, California. We're getting some great weather here today. Uh, my name is Jason, JJ Biscuits Bischoff, and I'm just so very excited about our next guest. He's a Tony Award winner. He's a muggle of magical talent. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, sir. Who are you? Where are you from? And uh, how would people know you? Uh, I'm distracted by toys. <laughs> I'm Dan Fogler um, from the Fantastic Beast movies. Sure. And Walking Dead, and I just did a show called The Offer. Great. Yeah, check it out. Well, uh, Dan, we're very grateful to have you here uh, on Pop Talk. Pleasure. And on Pop Talk, we challenge all of our guests. You can totally do this in real time. Yeah. We've got a variety of pop people parts in front of you. Wow. Feel free to make yourself, make a family member, just kind of make something wacky. It's entirely your call. You fiddle, have some fun. I'm fiddling. That's interesting <laughs> you should say that. I, uh, I think I should make a, a Luke. Ooh. Popped off from The Walking Dead. I like it. I like it. You and like for our fans at home, you know that this is the perfect distraction so we can ask those really hard, <laughs> biting questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get into some politics here. I'm just kidding. All right. So, Dan, if you would, um, mm -hmm. you know, here at Funko, we kind of exist at the intersection of everyone's favorite stuff, okay. right? We are a collectibles company. We've got collectors in our fandom. Uh, Dan, do you collect anything? And if so, what? Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I collected G.I. Joes. And, oh, like the three and three quarters? Yeah, yeah, little guys. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I had like a, j many of those. And, are you a Cobra uh, guy? Or are you a Joe guy? Oh, Something in between? right. I was an equal opportunity. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> G.I. Joe guy. Um, and yeah, whatever looked cool, you know, I'd, I would always switch favorites and um, love Storm Shadow. Sure. You know, I would also love Snake Eyes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, comic books, of course. Um, and yeah, all sorts of toys, Transformers, and um, yeah, I, I, I collect. And now my kids collect the pop uh, stuff. And cool. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's very, uh, very you're cool kind of world. a guy after my own heart here. Oh, I'm yeah? an 80s, you know, uh, 80s comic fan as well. Uh, we've got a Unicron downstairs. Um, okay, yeah, you want to yeah. check that out later. Nice. Very cool. Dan, I do have to ask some very hard biting questions here, like, uh -oh. what is the strangest thing you have ever eaten? Ooh. Strangest thing I've ever eaten. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in uh, Japan and I had some um, uh, sea urchin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a little squishy and it felt like it was alive and that weirded me out to this day. Yeah, what, had real umami flavor or what? how would you describe it? Uh, sure, yeah, umami. <laughs> Fishy, squishy. Fishy, Fishy, squishy. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, Dan, in a ratio of naughty versus nice, oh. where do you kind of register on that scale? Oh, I see. Uh, I'd say about um, hmm, 75% nice. Okay. All right. And it's safe to assume that 25% naughty? Yeah, I mean, there was only two choices there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's an arbitrary scale. It could be anything. All right, all right. Um, Dan, what is your go-to song in the shower? Oh, hmm. My go-to song in the shower. <laughs> well, okay. It's uh, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I have my go-to song in the shower is, but let's sing uh, something from Les Mis. God on high. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just Keep going. Hear <laughs> my prayer. <laughs> we'll take it. Okay. Mr. Broadway himself giving us a little snippet there of gold. We appreciate like that? that. We appreciate that. Um, actually, go. let me kind of just ask a little bit, and mm -hmm. hopefully this is a mouthful, so I'm going to do my very best. Please. You are a Tony Award winner. Oh, God. For the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Is that good, correct? Good man. Oh. All right, so as an actor then, what does, what, like, tools, what talents are different on stage versus on camera? Right. Okay, so, well, see, in this situation, I'm, I'm always, I come from the theater, so yeah. it kind of just 
shrinks down to a more intimate situation here. Yeah. Where you and I can talk at a regular level, they're picking us up on mic, and but I'm still using these guys as a barometer for my audience. Sure, you know? sure, sure. I, I can tell they're digging it, they're having a good time, you know. Um, but um, yeah, but in the theater, it just you just gotta get bigger and louder and faster and funnier. Come on, let's go. Are you one of those people that embraces the darkness of the of the audience, where you can't see anybody's necessary reac reaction, or is that mm. uh, is that something that is um, depowering to you? Depends on the night. Yeah. If I'm having a good night, it's nice to see us. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, having a good time. It's a utility. If you need it, it's there, and if you don't, ooh, yeah, hello. Ooh. Yeah. Let me just blind myself with this light for a second. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, yeah. cool. Uh, who is your personal actor hero? Um, mm. Or heroine, let's be real. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say Ron Williams, who was Mrs. Doubtfire, so yeah. that, Hello. That, that covers everything. Um, and <laughs> uh, yeah, he um, he was the one. Um, right away, I was like just kind of fascinated with him, and and then he was able. He was one of those guys that was able to make you laugh and cry in the same sentence, and I was like, hey, I, I want to be able to do that too. Yeah, um, Dan, do you believe in ghosts, and or have you ever had a supernatural experience? Uh, yes, and several. Okay. Yeah. You want ghosts, or you want? Um, we have like a, UFOs. We've got the that. time. You tell me. You tell me where you want to go. Okay, let me think here. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I was with a friend. Uh, we were hanging out in um, Los Feliz, uh, L.A. Yeah. I literally live there. Okay. Yeah. And we were on our the back porch area, over, and we and I looked over and I uh, there's the observatory. Yeah. You know. And um, and I would that was like I wake up every morning, whatever, watch the sunrise, and there's the observatory, and and you know I'm just chilling, and and I and I was with a friend, so there was a witness, and we look up, and above the observatory, is this white disc-shaped, uh, flying vehicle. Okay. And <laughs> how big? The, it looked pretty massive. Yeah, and it was above the observatory, so they were like, check us out. <laughs> you know, YouTube channel on the bottom, printed. Well, <laughs> no, it's just. I mean, it, it's, unapologetically I mean, there. Unapologetically there, and um, I mean, I talk about this stuff on my podcast. What's your podcast? The Dan Fogler Forty Experience there Podcast. There you go. All right. We always have a section that's like tales from beyond the veil. A lot of artists and actors, and you know, they are they they see ghosts and they see this kind of funky stuff all the time, um, and it was crazy, like. It could have been military, who knows? Sure. Because it was, there were tiny little ships that came out of it that definitely moved in a military fashion around the, the ship. Was this day or night, like you have to ask? Middle of the freaking day, man. Wow. It was sunrise. And then the, the other smaller ships went into it and boop, gone. And so what's crazy is um, I saw that same thing again in New York like a month later. And the street was, it was on 23rd Street, and um, it was a whole street of people. They were looking up like, what the? And I'm walking along going, la, la, la. what's everyone looking at? And then I was like, oh my God, that's the same thing I saw. I, I feel like what you're telling me here, or what you're, what you're putting down that I'm trying to pick up is, Please. if I want to see UFOs, we have to hang out. Uh, like, or maybe a very specific a UFO. I've seen quite a few. Same shape, same structure, no, or no, different? No, no, all different kinds, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, there's something else going on for you. Yeah, I think it is. I'm emitting a certain frequency. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, can you please describe your perfect last meal? Ooh, yeah. Let's say, baked ziti Sicilian from this specific place that I got from Brooklyn my whole life. Yeah. Um, called Giorgio's, if it's still there. That was just like the best thing. Uh, and some sort of crustacean. Okay. Maybe, maybe like um, <laughs> a, a crustacean a of a crustacean sort. A crustacean that's available. <laughs> no. A crawdaddy, maybe? Yeah. A crawdaddy. Oh, uh, sure. They fry it like they <laughs> sure. do in New Orleans <laughs> with everything they do. We'll upgrade you to like a lobster. Does that sound that good? That sounds great. Yeah, great. Um, and hey, let's get crazy. Let's just like have an entire like. You know, I'm I'm pretty lactose intolerant, so like what if we had like 
<laughs> going out gassy. Yeah, That's, uh, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. A lot of people do that. They're just like, yeah, just give me all this food and like I'm gonna leave a surprise for everybody <laughs> when I'm gone. You know? Sure. Last meal like that. Well, that's I'm, messed up. I'm very excited. That's the, that's the 25% that just came out. <laughs> very excited to tell you that our chefs downstairs are preparing it as we speak. You guys are gonna kill because, me? Yeah. <laughs> because this is laced with cyanide. <laughs> um, who would you say is the most profound character of fiction from your childhood? Holy, wow. I mean, it's a tie between Han Solo and uh, Indiana Jones. Nice. So, same guy, different personifications. Mm -hmm. So you big Harrison Ford fan? Oh yeah. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Have you had an opportunity to meet him? No, I have not. Okay. But I understand we like a lot of the same things. Well, I'm pleased to report that our Funko chefs downstairs are preparing, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're preparing uh, Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Dan, what is something you wish your fans knew more about you? I'm a sculptor. Really? What kind of sculpt? What medium? Uh, like gray clay, air drying. Yeah, yeah. And then you paint that Like thing. wet, wet sculpt, yeah. like, yeah. nice. Uh, big pieces, small pieces? Yeah, like, um, I guess my sculptures are about um, this big. Okay, yonder. Yonder? Y yonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really just started getting into it. I, my, my wife said, can you make a sculpture for me for my birthday? I said, sure, honey. I hadn't done it in like 20 years. Wow. And I, I feel like, all right, I'm gonna get back into it. I dig it. Yeah, that's you want to awesome. see what I made here? I would love to see what you made. It's original, folks. One of one. You know, um, <laughs> you know, like like old man Wolverine. Yes. Okay, so this is old man Luke. <laughs> okay, and and he's decided that his weapon of choice is like this this bludgeoning king's rod, and um, he's just like. Mm, unless you got a song to sing, get off of my land. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. You like that? I like that. Old man I like Luke. the hair. I did, I, yeah, it's like perfect. It's like perfectly walking He's like, I'm dead. gonna keep it crazy, yeah. but I'm gonna cut it short. <laughs> you like that? Get off of my land. It's too gonna, lifelike. It's too lifelike. You gonna sing a song or what? <laughs> God on heart. No, I'm kidding. Damn it, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well done, Dan. Arguably some of the best pop person, celebrity personas we've ever seen on the show. You think so? Yeah. That's I, great. I legit do. Let me make adjustments here. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to give him a, a headband. Nice. Is that okay? You're on tape, and now Luke's old too. Oh, old Luke is on tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there you go. go. I've got a head wound. <laughs> <laughs> And now no one likes me, and I just travel with this cat. <laughs> <laughs> the cat likes you. Uh, Dan, what would you say is your most underappreciated performance to date? Oh. Let me just, I paid him to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> my favorite is, um, the hell's my favorite? Oh, oh, the uh, underrated. Yeah. Take me home tonight. Take me home tonight. Uh, okay, dig into it. Why is it underappreciated? Thank you for singing. <laughs> uh, why? I think it's really hysterical. Yeah. And also fanboys, you know, they both got a, um, they got a um, kind of a, a crappy deal, the way they were released. And, yeah. Um, so I think that people should go back and look at those. I, I, I feel, Take Me Home Tonight, I had a lot of fun. Mm. It's a really, if you like 80s movies, check that out. Uh, speaking of amazing movies and mm -hmm. amazing songs, what is the best song in a movie ever? Um, mm, it's got to be Jurassic Park. <laughs> Original score. <laughs> 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 Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Dan, how would you describe yourself using only food? Ooh. Mmm. 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 Mm. I'm the most delicious chocolate babka you've ever eaten in your life. Everyone's like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> good choice, good choice. Uh, Dan, what is something that is not illegal, but totally should be? Example, complaining. Right. What should be illegal? What should be illegal? What should be illegal? But isn't? 
what should be illegal, what isn't. Enormous birds of prey. They scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Uh, can you be specific? Ones that still look like dinosaurs. Okay, but birds of prey specifically. I feel like they're all preying on us. Sure. I love little birds, they're very cute. Not a fan of emus, but love sparrows. Yeah, I feel like an emu is stalking you. Yeah, and they have, they have that dino toe kind of situation going on. Rip your yeah. spleen out. You just don't move, that's the trick, right? Alan Grant taught us, you just don't move. Is that what they tell us? Though? No, they, they can totally see you. Yeah, they're but just like, like thanks for anyway, standing there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just eat your jugular. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. But it's a chocolatey jug jugular for you. And there's no teeth, so it's just like, ah, ah, ah. it's horrendous. Yeah, I like it. Horrendous death. Dan, this one comes to us from our friends at the FBI. If you were on the run from Johnny Law, what country would you flee to and why? Uh, I'd go to <laughs> Not actually from the FBI, let's be real. <laughs> oh, um, where would I go? I would go to um, Bolivia because that's where, that's where Sundance and Butch Oh, nice. Which in Sundance? Which Cassidy? Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. Thank An you. actual, like, methodical answer. Yeah. I, like, I like it. Yeah. Uh, Dan, if there was a theme park that was built entirely in your honor and around your career, wow, what would one of the rides be? Oh, oh, oh. my gosh. One of the rides would be, um, like leading up to learning <laughs> that I got cast in Fantastic Beasts. Okay, describe that. Like, what are you trying because to capture? Part there? of the ride is, okay, you're just kind of like, because it happened here, at at San Diego, a couple years back. So, first part of the ride is like you're just kind of clicking along. You're you're working your way up through the throngs of of costumed people who are excited to be a comic company. For some reason, you got your comic books and they're so damn heavy. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you're just making your way up this hill, you know, like a, like a <laughs> salmon upstream. And then you get a call right at the top of the hill. And it's just like, hey man, it's, and it's your agent. And, and everyone gets this call and they're wearing helmets. And they get a call in their ear and they go, and it goes, hey man, where are you right now? And then, and then, and then you go, I'm at Comic-Con. And then they say, well, Comic Con's going to be a lot different next year. And then all of a sudden, it's just all boop, 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 boop. You hear the Superman music. Sure. And everyone just starts floating, right? Yeah. And then it's just like crazy, you know, roller coaster through the Wizarding World. Were you actually at Comic Con when you found oh, out? Yeah. For True real? Story. And I started floating. And then I was just like, free comic books for all. <laughs> <laughs> and tears just shooting out of my eyes. So you've been to Comic-Con several times. Was that, mm -hmm. was that like New York or was that San Diego? I was here, San Diego. How many times have you been? I've been coming here basically every year straight since Balls of Fury came out. Wow. Yeah, and then, you know, kind of here and there before, but ever since that I've been here for one reason or another. I was gonna ask you kind of what your most weird or special Comic-Con memory was, but I think that that checks yeah, that the box it, like wholeheartedly. That was, That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, that was That's rad. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad that like we, the Comic Con community, were able to share that a little bit with you, unknowingly, but we were there, right? Yeah, it was really nice. It's still nice. And security's like, who, who, who is that crying man in the Who's aisle? Who's the weird crying man <laughs> flying through the sky, dropping comic books on everyone? Why is he wearing a helmet? Get him! Awesome. Dan, what is? Oh. Thank you, thank you. You're doing very well. Dan, what is the best role you ever lost? Mm. We're gonna go from a high to one of those valleys on this roller coaster. Best role I ever lost. <laughs> um, I don't know, man, I've been pretty good at choosing. Let me think here. I think I dodged a bullet, but I was supposed to be the, um, <laughs> I was supposed to be the, the scientist in that Galifianakis hamster guinea pig movie. <laughs> I took one look at that, I was like, mm, I don't see a good future for these guinea pigs. <laughs> good choice. Thank you. Yeah, good choice. Thank you. So Dan, you are somebody that has been popped, immortalized yeah. in Funko Plastic, mm -hmm. uh, aside from old right Luke now. here. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's that like? I know being part of the Fantastic Beats franchise is a huge honor in of itself, but can you give us the feels of what it's like to be popped specifically? Yeah, I, um, that was surreal, man. Because I came home one day, yeah, and 
my wife was standing there and she's got this smile on her face and she's like, your, your, your Funko came. Oh, rad. You know, and I was just like, oh my God, this is so cool. And, and it's, you know, he's, it's, um, it's Jacob when he's about to see the rump in, he's got the helmet and the chest plate. And I was like, cool. So I was like, oh, let me go see it. And I turned the corner and there's my, my two-year-old daughter and she's like Godzilla and she's like biting it. She's like, ah, ah, I was like, what the, ouch. You know, you're hurting daddy. And, and um, it was weird to see that. Uh, and then I, you know, wrestled it from her. It's all dripping with saliva. And then I wipe it off and I'm like, yes. And it's got bite marks on it. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is, but it's so cool. It's like um, anytime I'm at a, uh, a Comic-Con and they, bring it up to sign yeah um it warms my heart it's lovely i love uh, these things are really cool and i'm i'm really just honored to be a, a part of the universe you know we they make well let me let me finish your sentence let me see if i can find no, some more say, money we're, we're just honored to have you as part of our universe and Thank certainly you. honored that you would come and hang out with us today well again this is dan i am jason this has been pop talk and we are so grateful again for certainly dan and, and all of you folks at home for tuning in so thanks again happy comic-con everybody Thanks, guys. Sing a song or get off of our land.